Okay, our next case is a, um, a New York case. This is the New York Court of Appeals case. It's from 1914. And it, uh, it's the uh, Scholendorf case. It uh, is a case involving uh, what we call privileges. And privileges are those things that uh, will, will in, in a sense, help determine whether a person is or is not liable for some sort of tort. And in this particular case, the, uh, the plaintiff was a, a woman who uh, was uh, ill. She went to a hospital for a particular malady, and uh, she had to be checked for, uh, for, for to determine what was wrong with her. And the court goes into a, 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 a very lengthy discussion about the fact that this is the, the defendant is the Society of New York Hospital, that is a, it's a, a, a not-for-profit hospital, and that at, at that particular time was very significant to the court's decision. Now the court looked at this particular case and looked at the facts of this case and essentially what happened was um, the woman had a, a, uh, a, a lump and she wanted to find out what, you know, what this lump was. So she went to the hospital, uh, Society of New York Hospital, and she made it very clear that she didn't want to have an operation. She specified this to the uh, nurses, she said it to the, to the uh, physicians. Uh, she made it clear that she didn't want an operation, but she wanted to be examined. Now, she was told that there was a procedure, a preparation procedure, under, which she had to undergo so that they could examine her and that the same procedure for the examination was the procedure that was going to be used for, that would have been used for an operation but uh, she made it clear to them she did not want to be uh, operated on. And uh, apparently what happened was they operated on her anyway. And as a result of the operation, uh, because of a gangrene developed in her left arm, some of her fingers had to be amputated and her sufferings were intense. She now seeks to charge the hospital with liability for the wrong. So she brings suit against the hospital. Apparently she didn't bring suit against the uh, the uh, the uh, doctors and nurses and, and, and staff she brought against the hospital. So the court, as I said earlier, goes into this uh, detailed discussion about uh, the charitable nature of the hospital, what the hospital is doing, and uh, you can read that for yourself. You can see all these different uh, discussions about uh, the nature of hospital work. Um, and the hospital is talking about an exemption because it says that uh, the relation is subsisting between a hospital and, and uh, because of the nature of the between the hospital and its physicians. And that na the, the nature of that relationship is, is, was key to this case. Um, essentially what happened was, in this case, the court looked at the nature of the relationship between the hospital and the physicians, and they found that there was not what they call a master-servant relationship, that the hospital essentially procures professional care for its patients so that they said that the professional care, the professionals who gave the care were responsible, but essentially not the hospital. And uh, the court uh, was very clear that uh, the plaintiff in this circumstance uh, was essentially a stranger. Uh, she never consented to become a patient for any purpose other than an examination under ether. She never waived she had never waived the right to recover damages for any wrong resulting from this operation, for she had forbidden the operation. In this situation, the true ground for the defendant's exemption from liability is that the relation between a hospital and its physicians is not that of master and servant. You know, they, they call them procurers. And they made it, the court makes it clear that the physicians may have been liable, but uh, the hospital was not. Now, one of the... the, 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 the things you can, you can notice in a situation like this is that you read the court's language, and this is one of those cases where you say to yourself, well, you know, is, is this really fair? I mean, and you can almost like write your own dissent in a case like this. And very often, it, uh, you have to be careful to, to read the dissents in, in the cases that do in fact have dissents. Um, you will often find that there are decisions by the court that, with which you may disagree. You say, well, how did they, why did they say that? And th this may be one of those cases. Because uh, the plaintiff made it very clear to the nurses and to a couple of doctors that she didn't want to be 
uh, operated upon. And this court made it very clear that this court believed that the liability was excluded from the hospital. Now, the woman is, is, is in a hospital. She's walked into this facility. She asks for care. They bring in the professionals, and these professionals do exactly what she tells them not to do. Ask yourself, query, to whom should she ask? Now, the court, uh, in, in a sense, is, is, I don't know if the court was being smug or not, I can't say that for sure, but the court says, uh, talks about the, 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 the nurses, uh, the, the woman made it very clear uh, that to the nurse that she didn't want to be operated upon, and the court says, was she the nurse to infer, infer from the plaintiff's words that a distinguished surgeon intended to mutilate the plaintiff's body in defiance of plaintiff's order? Was it her duty as a result of this talk to report to the superintendent of the hospital that the ward is about to be utilized for the commission of an assault? Well, uh, no, but uh, hospitals have charts. Each person has a chart. Shouldn't the nurse have written it on the chart? Shouldn't one of the doctors have written it on a chart? I mean, the court goes into the discussion about the fact that the nurse went off duty the next morning and the operation took place in the afternoon. The woman is, is, is under ether. She can't talk anymore. She has done everything she could, and yet the hospital is excused from liability. Of course, you know, you may agree with the fact that uh, the physicians and the nurses and the professionals have their job to do, but uh, what duty does a nurse have to, uh, you know, regarding the expressed desires of the patient? Uh, what duty does the hospital have with its relation to the nurse? In other words, if the hospital is procuring these people, procuring doctors, procuring nurses, is there not a duty upon the hospital to have a record of the desires of the patient from those professionals that are used by the hospital. We can argue this now over and over again and um, uh, of course the court came out with a different result uh, and very often you know the, the, the law changes. I mean uh, you will find that this the law may be different from what was this is a 1914 case. Uh, these cases that I have in your materials so that you get an idea of the general concepts of consent and privileges. I mean, not necessarily for this specific area of law, uh, this uh, holding. I mean, this holding by this court, uh, but the general areas. That's why the, these 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 cases are in here. Um, so be careful when you're looking at the cases. Be careful when you're studying the law, and make sure that you have the most const the, the most recent information available.